Good evening. I'm Lieutenant Colonel George Bivens, Deputy Commissioner of Operations with the Pennsylvania State Police. And I am very happy to be standing here in front of you uh, to announce the capture of Michael Burham a short time ago here in Warren County. I'm surrounded by uh, some of the members of the team. There were certainly many more, and uh, we owe them a debt of gratitude for all of the hard work, and dedication, and risk that they all took to do what we told the citizens of Warren County we would do, and that is to keep them safe. So at 3.57 this afternoon, our tip line received a call from some residents on Jackson Run Road in Conowango Township, Warren County, about a suspicious individual. We mobilized resources, as I told you, we have done many times, including a significant number of personnel on the ground, aviation assets, canines, and formed a very large perimeter around that area. By 5.50, Burham was in custody. He had been tracked through the woods as he approached, allow me to look at the name of the road here, Logan Road, he encountered perimeter uh, troopers there, attempted to prone out and hide and was approached from behind by members of the Marshals, the Border Patrol, and Pennsylvania State Police CERT. He was taken into custody and is currently at the Pennsylvania State Police Warren Station where he will be processed. And as I have told you, uh, determination will be made uh, where he will ultimately be housed following his arraignment. It will not be in the Warren County facility uh, we are still determining uh, where he will go, but, the, but that will be taken care of here shortly. I want to thank the residents of Warren County and the surrounding area for their patience through all of this. I know it was uh, challenging for them. I know they were nervous. I know they were scared. Uh, but, you know, they remained gracious to all of our people and, uh, and, and were very, very helpful to all of us. So I truly appreciate that. There is uh, something else that I want to do here, kind of, so this is a, a good story to be able to say, to tell you about tonight. I mean, we, we ended this without anyone else getting hurt. But I also wanted to tell you uh, an interesting story. So as uh, part of our Pennsylvania Police uh, CERT team, one of our members uh, is celebrating his 25th anniversary with the department. He came in this morning and told me that uh, Sir, it's my last day with the department and with CERT. We got to get him today. We chuckled about it, made sure everybody knew. And of course, no one really thought it would happen. He might be the guy you want to talk to about lottery numbers or anything else, because I think he's one of the luckiest uh, people around. Where did I lose him here? Corporal Brian King. I want to tell you a little more to the story about this hero. He was one of the guys that was out here. He's been helping throughout this whole process, trying to make sure we could safely capture uh, Burham. A number of years ago, Brian was uh, seriously wounded on a barricaded gunman call down in Westmoreland County. Lost the vision in one of his eyes as a result of taking a gunshot to the face. He came back from that not only as a full duty trooper, but as a full duty member of our special emergency response team. Has been an active duty member ever since, and I'm proud to call him my friend. I'm gonna miss him here with the department, but uh, I think it was, uh, it was meant to be that, uh, that you were back here today and, uh, and, and here to participate in this capture. And I wanna recognize Brian. And, uh, So what the Colonel is not explaining to you is the reason why I was able to do that was because of him. Um, he's humble, he won't admit that, but that's the reason. So I'm going to recognize him. <laughs> so, so the only other thing I would tell you is that we, our investigation continues into um, any assistance that Burham may have received. Uh, and discussions will occur uh, in the future 
with the district attorney's office if we believe we have sufficient evidence to prosecute anyone. And with that, I would be happy to take your questions. Can you share more about the tip that came in? We're hearing that you know a, a dog had maybe been barking and the owner of the house saw it. Is that correct? Can you elaborate a little more on that? That is. Uh, it is, and uh, they went out to check on uh, why the dog was barking, went to the rear of their property. They encountered Burham. Uh, I'm told that a conversation occurred, a brief conversation, asked him what was he doing there, and uh, he said something about camping, and uh, the owner of the property recognized him, got his wife back into, they were in a golf cart, got his wife back into the golf cart, and drove away from there so that he could immediately contact us as Burham fled into the woods. And uh, the rest of it played out then, as I described for you. That was in the backyard of their home? Yes. He was saying all week, we're waiting until he makes a mistake. What mistake did he make? He came out into the open and was spotted by an individual. It's in the area, one of the portions of the area, that we have been pushing hard. And as I said to you, that's been our strategy all along, is to push him hard, to have him make a mistake. He finally did. It was spotted. You all had a hand in that by getting the word out and uh, making sure that people knew what he looked like, who he was, and that they needed to call us right away. And they did exactly what we asked and what you asked of them. And, uh, and so he's in custody. What was his physical condition that he found himself on the road for a week now? Looks tired and worn out as we thought that he might. He's still wearing his uh, prison pants turned inside out. He was dirty, wet. Uh, I, I don't know that I would call him malnourished. Uh, it, it's hard to tell from, from just looking at him. Again, I would characterize his condition as worn out. Were there words exchanged from him that you can share with us? What did he say? Did he say? Uh, we're not, we're not going to discuss uh, what, was, uh, what was said there. Again, he's being taken back to the station. Uh, there will be an interview done there, and, um, and he'll be processed and uh, incarcerated. Uh, he did not have anything in his immediate possession. We will be searching the area to ensure that there is still nothing else there. Um, over time, he did have access to some equipment that was out there. You know, I told you about uh, bags that were recovered. We did link him to those with DNA, uh, and we knew that uh, he had potentially accessed some survival equipment. To kind of close the loop on one of the reasons that we thought he was armed, and he was not, uh, at least when we physically took him into custody again, um, we'll be searching that area just to make sure there are not any firearms still around that he, he dropped or hid. But uh, there was ammunition of a couple of different calibers in uh, those bags that we found. Um, not ammunition that would have fit a weapon that he used in the original kidnapping. Uh, and so that was one of the things that led us to be concerned that he may very well be armed. You said he, he approached the perimeter and then Oh yeah, yes, he was being pursued uh, by the officers along with canines. Uh, New York State Police had a bloodhound and Customs and Border Patrol had a uh, uh, search and patrol dog uh, immediately behind uh, the bloodhound. And so, uh, yes, he was being tracked and pushed by uh, a line of tactical members. Did he attempt to resist or run away again after officers were No, he was taken into custody at gunpoint. Yes. Where will that be? Uh, I, I don't know. Do you have any idea on that? No, we'll have to, we'll have to let you know about that. Will you be facing any additional charges beyond the escape charge? Uh, that's to be determined yet. Do you still feel he would need help along the way? As I said, that'll be part of the ongoing investigation. And uh, if we can prove that he was, uh, there will be charges filed for that. Can you talk about the feeling among the search teams now that he's finally, uh, you know, in custody? You know, what are you feeling after this almost two weeks, sir? It's a great relief. Um, all of us were always concerned that we would end up with a citizen harmed in some way, or even one of the officers harmed in one way. You know, there's a lot of responsibility when you put a team like this out into the field. And again, knowing that he had ammunition and may very well have a weapon that he has used a weapon in the commission of crimes before, that he was suspected in another homicide, 
Um, he really had very little to lose in, uh, in this whole search uh, that, we, uh, that we conducted. And so uh, it would not have been a surprise to me if it, there had been a violent encounter uh, at the end. And so you're always worried about things like that. So to not have that play out, uh, it's a good day. Uh, there was not a stockpile in the immediate vicinity of where he was found, but uh, we know that he was through the area where the stockpiles uh, were. They were primarily south of Warren. Uh, he had identified two and we found a third. And I say he had identified, we had maps that uh, were also in his bag that um, uh, identified uh, some locations that he had stashed things. Again, I thank you all uh, for your help in getting the word out to uh, the citizens, and uh, we're just very happy that, uh, that it's come to a conclusion in this way. Thank you.